Finally, we have entered the second day of sugar economy activism in Kakamega County, a county that was hosting the entire Western Region headquarters. And let us be sincere. We have individuals who are eyeing for Kakamega gubernatorial seat since Governor Paranya is finishing his second and last term. And among this individual, Senator Kilio Fasimalala is seen as a front runner among this other candidate. For that reason, that's why the name of Senator Malala has been drawn largely into this issue just to weaponize that situation so that they can bring him down heading to 2022 general election. They are looking for things that they will use to decampaign Senator Malala in Kakamega. <laughs> Governor Paranya, who is the current CEO of Kakamega County, is nowhere to be seen as of now seen this issue erupted outside and he is the boss of the county the last time i have seen him is when he was having a meeting with the matungu member of parliament uh, honorable peter oscar nablindo they were talking about matter of health and the issue to do with the reviving mumias company since mumias happened to be in his area now i want us to use this opportunity to check into the issue that senator Cleophas Malala was questioning into at the Senate on the move of handing over Mumia's sugar company to the company that would win that bidding. But before I go deep into that analysis, you might be watching me for the first time and you have not yet subscribed. My humble request is please consider to subscribe so that any other time, once I come out with a video like this one, you will definitely get notified. And to everyone who has subscribed, I must say thank you so much for your unconditional support. To the returning subscribers, just know I love it. Now, let us get back to the issues. Now, number one, in the issues that Malala is calling for the transparency, number one, what was binding, was bidding done? That's the first question he asked. Number two, what was the credential, credentials used to pick the successful tenderer? Number three, what are the law regulations or relevant legal instrument under which the process of leasing was conducted? Number four, was there public participation in the process? Number five, the name and details of the other companies and, and submitted other companies that submitted their bidding for the tender. Number six, are we, are we also leasing the nine acre, 9,000 acres of land and the other non-core assets? Number seven, how many years will the investor lease? Number eight, who will pay the other remaining creditors? And lastly, number nine, what is the government role in the leasing of the, in the leasing process? Now, remember, Mumias Sugar was not only basing on sugar products remember they they were they had water and beside this one also they were in real estate business so this was a large company that's why all these questions are coming out and even they have a nuclear of whooping 9000 acres of land so those are the real questions senator malala was raising at the senate and this are still the question that he still stand with that he need to be answered since he's the senator of Kakamega County. And I believe this is the question that all the elected leaders in Kakamega County, especially even the area member of parliament, should be asking outside there. <laughs> anyway, Senator Malala has been largely supported by the Ford Kenya Party leader, Senator Masika Wetangula, even in the Senate. And at the same time, the ANC party leader Mselem Davadi is echoing out what Malala is asking there. These are real questions that are being asked outside there. Remember, we are talking of Mumias Sugar, which was an, a large company. <laughs> a large company. And if you trace the problem that is ailing Mumias Sugar, it comes all the way from the time when they had the former, Gamega, uh, former Nairobi governor, Kidero, as the director in Mumias' company. 
That's the time the problem started. We have issues when Jubilee came to the government, to, to, to power. When they started bringing in other sugars, then repackaging in Mumiasi company labels, selling outside there as a product from Kenya. These are the issues that started there, bringing problem to the farmers. After you are importing sugar from outside, then rebrand that sugar in Mumias company labels. How do you expect the farmers on the ground to survive? <laughs> that is how the farmers lacked a market where they sell their sugar cane. That's why these questions are very fundamental to me and any other serious person outside there. I feel Marala is right. Because at the end of the day, what if they list this company to Delvik? Then at the end of the day, Delvik will use this one as a conduit of bringing in sugar from outside, like the way they have been bringing from Brazil, then come in and just refine that sugar, meaning they will employ a few number of people, then sugar can farmers will have nowhere to take their product. Then at the end of the day, rebrand it as Mumia's sugar and sell to Kenyans as a Kenyan product. Where does this one leave the farmer? That is the problem. And this is the fundamental question that I feel that should be answered outside there. Rather than the kind of weaponization that we are seeing, a few people taking youth to the street to demonstrate on matters that even if you ask them, was there public participation the same way Malala is asking here? None of these people even appeared on that public participation. They have not heard this. I think if there was public participation, then this thing could have been open. They could have understood this process. <laughs> so, let us not weaponize youth against the other leaders who are questioning serious issues in matters of Western region economy. I'm surprised that people are asking, are telling, are telling us outside here that we have people coming from other counties <coughs> To poke their nose in Kakamega count issues. That one means they're talking of Senator Wetangula because he talked that about that one in the in the Senate. How dare Senator Wetangula is a party leader and he has elected leaders all over Western and largely outside Western. So his voice is needed. If Musalem David was not going to speak about this issue, people have, could have been asking outside here. Then, what has Musalem David said about this? <laughs> Governor Paranya is silent. I'm yet to see people asking, what is Governor Paranya saying about this? It's simply because he wants to avoid the, uh, uh, the, the kind of politics being played outside there. But going forward, I still believe that beside all these politics, there is a way that will be found to solve the Mumia sugar issues. The LV company should avoid the issue of popularism and uh, going into the matter of politics here when they are coming out to give this statement outside here. Thank you so much. I want to leave you with, with a speech from Senator Malala when he was asking about these issues at the Senate. But please consider to subscribe. See you in my next video and may good God bless you. Listen to Senator Malala. So we'll go to one special request from the Senator of Kagamega. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I rise pass one to Standing Order 48-1 to seek a statement from the Standing Committee on Agriculture, Livestock and Fisheries on the State of Affairs at Mumias Sugar Company Limited and the reported resuscitation measures. In the statement, the committee should, one, address in detail the current state of the company's assets and liabilities while indicating the value of the core and non-core assets and stating which entity undertook such valuation, if at all. Second, state the facts of the current receiver manager while providing details on when and by whom the decision to lease out the company was made and tabling correspondence on the said decision 
to the Capital Markets Authority and other regulatory bodies. Three, provide details on the procedure to be followed by government in selling its stake in the company and address specifically the bidding process, including who the bidders were, when the bidding took place, when the evaluation of submitted tenders was done, what criteria was used to pick the successful tenderer, what were the relevant legal instruments under which the process of leasing was conducted, whether there was public participation in the process, which other companies submitted their bids for the tender, and when were they invited to bid. Four, Madam Speaker, explain the company's revival plan and provide details of the entity deemed to be qualified to take Mumia's Sugar Company Limited while providing the justification and lastly, Madam Speaker, indicate whether the stakeholders were consulted and provide a report of such consultation, if at all, including the creditors and debitors and clarify who will pay the pending debts owed by the company, particularly debts owed to farmers and workers. Madam Speaker, it must be very clear that we as leaders of Western region are not opposed to any investor taking over Mumia Sugar Company because that has always been our interest to resuscitate the sugar mill in Mumia Sugar Company. But we want accountability. We want the people of Western region to know who is this person that is coming to take over from Mumia Sugar. We want information to flow. That is why, as the representative of the people, I have brought these questions on the floor of this house. This is the right platform for us to engage with any person who wants to take over Mumia Sugar Company. Thank you. Thank you, Senator.